taking your questions and comments on, on uh, across our social media platforms. We've got a question on Facebook coming from Uli Ndisi Chaba saying, is it always a challenge for self-employed clients to get a bond? Any advice on how you can navigate this? Yes, it's, it's a challenge. And the reason why it's a challenge is most self-employed um, people do not put their house in order. And the first three, four steps that we've mentioned is very critical. You need to get your financials in order. You need to make sure that everything is going through your bank statement. Self-employed people always say, no, I want to take cash because I don't want the bank to charge me too much. But that is detrimental to your future pro uh, progress. And, and what self-employed people must not confuse it is, is they mustn't confuse movement with progress. You are moving, but you're not progressing. And that is very, very critical. Do not confuse movement with progress. Progress is what we see on your bank statement. So do not hide things from the bank. And that is what lenders are going to look at to fund you. Because you, if you go to a lender, and I help a lot of people like that, when you go to a lender, they'll say, sorry, we don't have a proof. So you take cash, and that is not the, how the system works. So they shouldn't be afraid to be honest and play transparency, because if they do that, it goes a long way to make them get out of the financial rat race. Going to more of your questions and comments at home, um, we're taking one from Iris Popella asking, is it advisable to take a loan and pay for the house and do the house? Is it advisable to, to take a loan and pay for a house and do the house loan terms, but rather take a normal bank loan and buy a stand? So do we buy the property as is, you know, sort of do a home loan or do we, um, you know, buy a stand instead and then build? Okay, so again, I'll answer this question in two folds. So the first thing is, let's, let, let me take the latter question, which is buying a stand. The important thing is, what is the grace period that the bank is going to give you to build, right? Build. Because if you, yeah, because yeah, if you buy a stand, there is, going to, there is going to be delay in terms of erecting improvements on the land. So how long is it going to, is, what is the grace period? If the bank is giving you three month grace period, six month grace period, then fantastic. Maybe you can get a good contractor that can build your house in three months. It is highly unlikely, but with six months, it's very likely to get a contractor to build your house in six months. So the grace period is critical. But if you're not getting any grace period from a bank, then buy an existing property because you're starting. You don't know, you, you need to learn, you need to make mistakes. And as much as Echo can say a whole lot of things, there's still first-hand experiences and first-hand mistakes that you have to make to be able to correct yourself and know better. Grace period is very critical. If you don't have a grace period, then buy an existing property, do your 80-20 rule. The video is also there that people can watch on my YouTube channel, Property Ask Echo. Apply the 80-20 rule and as time goes on, you will eventually become a developer. As you keep on doing better deals, you will have enough cash flow to be able to go and say, okay, yes, I can buy a land. The bank is going to give me 40% of that value of that land, but I will still be able to wait because I've got excess cash flow coming from other deals that will cover this debt that I'm taking. 